The pedos are being normalized. This is not a crazy conspiracy theory. This is, <laughs> we've seen this creeping up in recent years, and the libs have always said, no, you Republicans, you're crazy conspiracy theorists. And then you remember there was that assistant professor at Dominion, Old Dominion University, and that professor came out and said, look, we need to stop stigmatizing pedophilia. I don't even use that term. I call them MAPs, minor attracted persons. And then what did the libs tell us? They told us, no, no, MAPs, minor attracted persons, redefining pedos. That, that's, a, that's a joke. It's a meme. It's a crazy right-wing conspiracy theory. Now we got another one. Licensed counselor and sex therapist, who Jenna Ellis is reporting, works for the Pennsylvania government. I'm not, I haven't seen a ton of news reports on that. But at the very least, a licensed counselor and sex therapist advocating on video for the poor oppressed pedos. I'm a licensed professional counselor and sex therapist in Erie, Pennsylvania. And today I wanna to talk about minor attracted persons. And I want to talk about minor attracted persons because they are probably the most vilified population of folks in our culture. And most folks are making incorrect assumptions about them without actually knowing much about them. And those assumptions create harm for an already marginalized population. You may have noticed that I'm using the term minor attracted persons, sometimes abbreviated to MAPS, instead of the more commonly used term pedophile. And I'm doing this because the term pedophile has moved from being a diagnostic label to being a judgmental, hurtful insult that we hurl at people in order to harm them or slander them. I also prefer person-first language that recognizes that any label we might apply to a person is only part of who they are. This is coming to a psychology department near you. This is coming to a mainstream media near you. This is, we are, we're not 10 years away from this being the term of art for pedos, minor attracted person. We're probably two years away, if that. It, they are now earnestly pushing for this. She makes one good point here. She says pedophiles, sorry, minor attracted persons are the most vilified people in society. That's true. That's true. Rightly so, obviously, for people who abuse children. Uh, but even the people who just have these desires and maybe don't act on them, they're, they're vilified too. Of course, of course they are. And she's saying that's wrong. It's wrong for a desire to be vilified. It's wrong for a person to be vilified for a desire. And there's actually even kind of a half truth in that, which is that some, this is a fallen world. Sometimes people are born with certain inclinations that are bad. The inclinations themselves are bad. And they were born with a, maybe a predisposition to that. And that it seems sort of unjust to judge people for a predisposition that they may not act on, that they try to resist, but that nevertheless is kind of with them. There's, a, there's some truth to that. Okay. But she's wrong to say we shouldn't judge pedos. E not just people who abuse children, but even people who have the desire. Because what is at the basis of this is something that we have totally embraced as a society. It's not just the left that's embraced it. Actually, a lot of the, on the right have embraced it too. The idea that no desire can be wrong. No desire, actions can be wrong, but no desire can be intrinsically wrong. And the reason that we have adopted this is because the libs have completely inverted the moral order and the, the right has abandoned the moral order for a kind of moral relativism. Even people on the right will say, well, how do we define what's good? Your good might be my bad. Just th there, that way, because we can't engage in any actual moral discussion, you just, you do you, I'll do me. We have to all leave each other alone. And that's been the kind of consensus on the right for the past two or three decades. And it's completely incoherent. And it allows the libs, which have inverted the moral order, to get away with murder or pedophilia in this case. Desires can be bad because there's good and there's bad, and we, through our reason and through our moral conscience, can know something about what is good and what is bad. And we, in our political order, can, can uh, create policies that discourage what is bad and encourage what is good. And we can have that clarity, and we can define it, and we're not infringing on anybody's rights. Pedos don't have rights to... to to the desire for young children. People don't have rights to things that are not reasonable and not for their benefit, okay? And so we, we have to be able to say that. I think a lot of people, even on the right, don't want to go that far. So they know, everyone knows that it's wrong to be a pedo. Everyone knows that it's wrong to sexually desire children. But we're not, 
willing to take on the premise that allowed that to take hold in the first place. That desire can be wrong in itself. And we have the right in politics, we have the obligation in politics to enshrine our vision of good and bad in standards and say, no, you don't get to do that. The other thing underlying this confusion here, this woman's bizarre rant, is the idea that desire is not changeable. And this comes from the gay rights movement in the 90s when they said, we're born this way. There's sexual desire is really just sexual orientation. It's completely unchangeable. And if you even suggest that we in any way try to resist our desires, that this would be conversion therapy, and that's evil, and that's terrible. Now, of course, they're changing their tune, and they're saying not only is desire mutable, but, but even sex itself is mutable. That's why we chop people up, and boys can be girls one day, and then they can become boys again on the next day, and that's totally fine. So they've abandoned that, but you're still seeing that premise uh, around, and a lot of people on the right have imbibed that premise, but that's not true desires can change, maybe not entirely, but anyone who's ever dealt with an addiction knows this. If it, let's say you're an alcoholic and you, you drink, uh, the more and more you drink, the harder it is to not drink. The more intense your desire for drinking becomes. It's true of drugs, it's true of food, it's true of anything, it's true of sex, it's true of anything. And you can, the more you engage in vice, the more vicious you become, the more you engage in virtue, the easier it is to engage in virtue. That's, that's because these things are habits. And habits become easier the more that you do them. And they become harder to break the more that you do them. That's true on the good side, and that's true on the bad side. That's how desire works as well. And we've been told in our culture that you should never resist any of your desires. We've been told that repression is really bad. And repression and suppression of desires can be a very, very good thing. But it's, it, that's not even the end stage, by the way. That's not even the conservative and Christian view of things. The conservative and Christian view is that we have these desires, and desires are properly ordered all toward God. That desire in and of itself is not a bad thing, but because this is a fallen world, sometimes desires get perverted, even to the extreme perversion of pedophilia. And what we have to do is sublimate those things, kind of reorder them, recognize that our desires sometimes go in the wrong direction, and stop that and resist them going in the wrong direction and channel them toward that which is good, and ultimately toward the highest good, who is God. That's, that's the way to actually deal with this. And I fear that conservatives are not willing to have that conversation because they're going to have to get past a lot of the absolute detritus of the, the moral sloganeering, the immoral sloganeering and, and shallow uh, uh, idiocy that we, we've had to deal with in recent decades. That's the only way we're going to get through this, though. And just yelling and screaming about how the libs are normalizing the pedos and we need to pull out the wood chippers and the, the helicopter rides again, that's really not going to do it because we're not taking on the fundamental problem, which is beyond the level even of just a, a certain policy or a certain definition in a textbook. It goes into a cultural level and to a moral level. And it would, if we could get there, it would restore a normal political order that is much more traditional in the United States that we had until just a few decades ago. Or has the culture shifted so far that we can't do that anymore? I don't know. Certainly hope we can make America great again. A lot of people are longing to make America great again. Will we have the clarity and the courage to do it? I hope so. Remains to be seen. Head on over to goodranchers.com slash Knowles. And do not skip this ad. Don't do it. Because I got something that's really good for you and really good for lots of kids as well. Our friends over at Good Ranchers are on a mission to donate 100,000 high quality meals this month to children in need. To help them reach their goal, 10 lucky fans who purchase a box of delicious American meat from goodranchers.com slash Knowles will win a 30-minute Zoom call experience with me on September 30th. We're calling it a meet and greet. Do you get that? <laughs> right now, I just love that phrase so much. Uh, the offer is only valid through August 31st. So you got to go to goodranchers.com slash Knowles. Use promo code Knowles to save $30 on your box of 100% American meat plus free shipping. And then you'll be entered to win a 30-minute Zoom session with me which is a meet and greet. Let's help these guys reach their goal of 100,000 donated meals this month. Meet and greet. I'm so glad you liked that clip. You know, thanks to you, we hit 1 million subscribers. We're now over a million subscribers here on YouTube. I would like to hit 1 trillion. Uh, by hitting 1 trillion, that will put me well on my way to my real goal of hitting one quadrillion. So uh, please ring the bell, subscribe, get the notifications. We'll see you next time.